Yes, do you want to see me? Liza, you've got to do something. What's the matter? I'm in a frenzy, frenzy, frenzy. Either Johnston leaves this magazine or you get another boy to do your photographing. I mean it, I mean it. Now, I've put up with them in a perfectly saint-like fashion, and you know I have. But this is the end, the absolute end. Please, Russell, the printers are waiting for these pictures. Well, they'll have to wait. Do you know that Johnson took every one of our sides 12 to 16 out last night? Two of them haven't shown up, and these two have bags under their eyes down to there. I thought you girls had more sense. I don't think I look so bad. Well, Mr. Paxton does, and he's the one who has to take the pictures. When I was your age, I knew if I wanted to earn my living, I had to study and work my head off. You girls are very lucky you were born with a job. Don't be foolish and toss it away. Please, Russell, you've got to do something. The printers are waiting for these pictures. Now go on like a good lad, please. Oh, really? I'm so bad I could spit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three. Girls! Girls! He's a dream boat, a dream honey boat. I've taken pictures of beautiful men before, but this one is the end, the absolute end. His face is so beautiful, it would melt in your mouth. Excuse me, I forgot something. I'll be back in a minute. Maggie? Maggie! Tell him, Allison, is he a creature from out of this world or not? He's from heaven. <laughs> Russell, will you please come back here and sit down? We've been waiting for you. But, Ducky, I haven't shot his picture yet. His polo outfit just arrived. His polo outfit? Yes, that he's been waiting around for hours like a perfect angel. He's a dreamboat. Russell, come back here and... Oh, I'm sorry, Liza. <laughs> Get these girls out of here before they tear them to bits. Oh, girls. Oh, girls. Miss Foster, I have never seen such disgraceful conduct in my whole life. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Now go on back to work. Really? I've never known such rude girls in all my life. I, I don't know what Mr. Curtis will think. Get it, dear. Even if you could have it, it's poison. But, oh, what a lovely way to die. Mr. Curtis, I don't know how to apologize to you for this. It's quite all right. I'm kind of getting used to it. Uh, this is Miss Elliot, our editor. How do you do? I know you're crazy to get away, so I'll be quick. I just want to take your picture, just as you are. Yes, hot and must. Yes, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Your head just a wee bit that way. There. That's right. Now, don't move. Only be a minute. It's awfully nice of you to come and pose for us, Mr. Curtis. Not at all. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Elliot? We've met before. No, really. I'm awfully sorry. Where? When was it? Well, you sat next to each other at dinner about a year ago. A year ago? Yes. Uh, don't move, don't move, don't move. I'll be only second there. Hold it, hold it. Oh, that's all to be terrific! It was at Mrs. Brackett's. As a matter of fact, I took you home. We sat in the car talking. Now do you remember? Of course, of course. How <laughs> stupid. I have such a wretched memory. I, forgive me, I do that all the time. <laughs> That's all right. I was just wondering if we might have that drink we were going to have together. Well, I couldn't today. Maybe tomorrow. I'm leaving for the coast this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Curtis. May I have your autograph? Sure. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I collect autographs of all the movie stars. I put them in a big book. and On rainy days, I take them out and look at them. Now, really. Please? Okay. Stormy weather. Thanks. Mr. Curtis. Yes? Hollywood is calling you. Thank you. Uh, don't pay any attention to that one. He's just too, too funny for words. You can take your call in my little office right there. I can't tell you how swell it's been seeing you again. May I call her next time I'm in town? Please do. We might have dinner together. Fine. Well, that's a date. <laughs> oh, and uh, don't forget. I won't. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's try our house again. Darling, do I look too dreadful to bounce into 21? Oh, just the bar, I mean. I wouldn't dream of going upstairs this way. You look ducky. Where the devil is Liza? Oh, darling, she's been delayed somehow. Oh, Allison, for heaven's sake, don't be such a drip. Delayed? It's after 7 o'clock. She hasn't shown up all day. She hasn't even telephoned. Russell, take that silly-looking thing off your face. You're a great help. What do you want me to do? Weep quietly? Allison, is that you I smell? Do you like it, dear? 
It's that new perfume, Northwest Mountain. You'll get a horse with it, not a man. Oh. Darling, we've been frantic. Shut up, Alice. I know, I'm sorry. Look, we're going to have to work late. Russell, talk to Adams and see if you can hold the men at the shop. Allison, call Bergdorf and see if they'll hold over until the next issue and promise them anything. Maggie, I want to see you for a minute. Would you wait? And darling, you look liverish. You ought well, to take it. Stop. It's not very chic, move, but wait. Move, 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 move. I'll be attorney for prosecution, can't be bought a soul. For the jam she's in, there's no solution once the story is told. Introducing that thrilling writer and attorney for the defense, Randy Curtis. For the defendant can't be sold or bought Miss Elliot's car is in the ascendant This will come to naught Your Honor, Judge Jackass I should like to call that peerless witness Kendall Nesbitt Miss Elliot, you've heard the charges against you Have you made up your mind about any of these things? No, I haven't Do you intend to? I don't know can you give this court a reasonable explanation for not making up your mind? Yes, I can. There once was a girl named Jenny Whose virtues were varied and many Excepting that she was inclined Always to make up her mind And Jenny points a moral With which you cannot quarrel As you will find Who's Jenny? Never heard of Jenny. Jenny is out of place. But I'm sure the court will find Jenny is immortal and has a bearing on this case. As uh, for instance. Well, for instance. Ooh. Jenny made her mind up when she was three. Her equal would be hard to find. Jenny points a moral with which we can't quarrel. Makes a lot of common sense. Jenny and a saga prove that you are gaga if, if you, you don't, don't keep sitting on the fence. Jenny and her story point the way to glory to all men and womankind. Anyone with vision comes to this decision. Don't, don't make, make up, up. You shouldn't make, make up. You must make, make up. up. Oh, never make, make up. up. Anyone with vision comes to this decision. Don't make up your mind. Shut up. You don't have a chance. Mr. Curtis is here, and Miss Grant, Allison, and Russell are having a row, and you can hear them all over the place. Those two. I demand a showdown, an immediate and utter showdown. Russell, I can't talk to you now. Do you know what that Allison woman did? She deliberately and quietly and calmly took my color plate Russell, and... Russell, not now. Not now, not now. What am I supposed to do to get some attention around here? Believe in front of you? Paxton, the dog department wants to see you. How darling of them. I might stay there the rest of my life. If you have any luck with a sleeping beauty, let me know. Really, I could spit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hi! Uh, this is the end. The absolute end. <laughs> <laughs>